Hey everyone, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we have another really quick video, uh, hopefully, <laughs> and um, they're actually going to be really simple. So for those of you who want more simple ideas for creating really cute coasters um, or just pieces in general, this is definitely going to be the video for you. Just to show you what we're making, these don't have their top coats yet, but it gives you an idea of what we're going to be making. So we're making these little uh, floral washi tape coasters. And uh, normally, if you've been following me for a while, you know that normally when I create anything like these, I usually um, put gold outlines on the edges um, of the washi tape. But, um, and I would use something like this. This is my Serenade Relief. It's an acrylic outliner. And I would just literally paint edges on straight or wiggly or designed or whichever, you know, whatever I'm kind of going for. That's normally what I would do. But I know a lot of you have mentioned that you find that, you know, you find that you, they're a little bit more difficult to use or you're just, you know, you don't feel comfortable with um, the outliner and possibly, you know, you'd like me to suggest some other options. So I have another option for you. So this is what we're going to work on today. All right, so I'm going to put these aside. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using washi tape, as I mentioned. So we have this beautiful one here. And again, I get my washi tapes from the washi tape shop online and I do have discount codes. So if you like these types of washi tapes and you want to get some from them, I do have a discount code. Just check the description under the video here. And then I have this really pretty green one as well. All right, so we're going to be using both of these. And I also have, as you can see, I have some resin already cured into these coasters. So um, I believe both of these are May Spring and I can't remember the exact names, but um, this is an emerald and this is like a really dark blue. I uh, can't remember what it's called, a sapphire. Let, give me a second and I will find out. Okay, so these are our two colors here and they do look a little bit different in the bottle than they do when they're poured. So just so you know, this one is Imperial Emerald, Imperial Emerald, and this one is Opulent Tanzanite. So I can just show you really quickly. So like I said, the colors do look a little bit different in the bottle, like the mica powder, but this is the color you'll get with the resin. And then this one here, and I know as I mentioned before in previous videos, it's very rare for me to use a color straight out of the container like this mica powder. Normally I'm mixing colors and making my own customs, but in this case I did use these direct, um, direct colors. So if you're looking for these exact colors, and I'll show you them again here when they're actually poured in resin. This is what you get. Okay, so what we're going to be using um, for to put behind or kind of around our washi tape is today I'm using this paper here. And these are called authentic Japanese papers. And I got them from my local art store. And you can see they're just absolutely, they're just single sided. I believe they all are. The only exception is this one. This one's actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it's double sided with the design but the rest they're all single-sided papers and they're they're kind of on the thinner oh, hello. they're not as thick they're not definitely not cardstock or anything like that they're kind of like these ones actually have a bit more of a texture to them this one doesn't this one's kind of flat on the back but these ones some of them have like this texture you can see on the back so it's like I want to say it's like it's a very fibrous paper it's not rice paper but it's like fiber type of paper anyway um so yeah they're just beautiful and they have these really metallic -y kind of shimmers to them which is what I like about them a lot so and uh, we don't need a lot for them and like I, I want to use some of these other papers in some future videos as well so you may see them come back up because they're just gorgeous so anyway but today we're using uh, this one here, and like I said, it's just plain on the back, but it has a really pretty metallic look to it, which really complements well to our washi tape because our washi tapes are gold gilded as well. So as you can see there, that shine of the washi tape or the gold on the washi tape. 
All right, so we're using this and what I've done, and I've actually already done it, but you can just use scissors to cut them out. So I just cut out a couple strips here and then we're gonna be applying our washi tape to these. So we can do that really quick. So I have, like I said, I have two colors. I have this one with, with dark blue, so that's gonna go on our dark blue one. And we have our green one that's gonna go on our green one. So for the dark blue, what we'll do here is I'm going to, let's see if I can just find a little section here. And this is a very repetitive washi tape. Not all of their washi tapes are very repetitive. Some of them actually have beautiful, like large picturesque type designs on them where you can get full sections, which I've done on some of my stained glass pieces. Um, but this one is one that has a very nice kind of seamless repetitive design. So it actually makes things a little bit easier for us here. So I'm just gonna tear it. And this one has the, um, the backer paper on them. Not all of them do, but this one does. Uh, okay, and we're just gonna center that. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Ooh, let's see if we can do that again. Just want to make sure I get it pretty centered. Okay, well, that's going to have to work for now. So we have that. And then um, what I actually do. So um, normally this would be kind of all you would need to do, but this particular, this set, um, the, the, I find that the washi tapes that are kind of have the lighter backgrounds or the white backgrounds, they tend to be a little bit more see-through. So you can see, I think you can see here that um, the gold almost kind of shows through it, um, the washi tape. So then what I like to do in that scenario is I like to double it up. Um, don't know. I might be able to do that there. So then I'll just take another one. And then I will do my best to line it up so that it is exactly on top of each other. Like so. And then that really just kind of brings the color, um, you know, up a bit. So this way it's very, it's very clear. So there we go. So you can see here, it's kind of see-through, but on here now it looks quite opaque. So, so it just, that's one. And that's the one we're going to be using for our blue, like so. And then we can do our green one while we're at it. green one and then all we need to do now is trim them out let's just move these things up and we have that there okay and again if you've seen any of my previous videos you know that when I'm working in uh, coaster molds like this and we need to cut things out I generally make a template out of just clear plastic or acetate so what I did is I uh, I'm not going to do it on camera today just because I I did it in one of my more recent videos. So you can just trace back to a couple of videos if you want a step-by-step -step tutorial. But literally, I just take the plastic and I sit it on top of the mold. And then, and then I take a Sharpie. You can see that there's like a Sharpie marker line on here. And I would just, you know, when it's on top, I would just draw from the inside of the silicone mold is where I draw my guide for this for the Sharpie marker and then I trim it out. And then that gives me the guide that I need for this. Okay, so in this case now, I take that and I lay it on top of my design here. Like so. And I'll just use my pencil. 
the outline. And the same thing on this one. There we go. All right, so we have our two, like I said, so super easy. So we just basically um, just stick it onto the paper and then we cut it out into the shape that we need, put it into our mold. And now what we do is we would just need to adhere it to the, um, to the cured resin that's already in our, in our mold here. So what I do for that is I use my Duraclear gloss varnish. Just put some in the cup here. And it's I just I just use it like a glue. I'll just put a layer of that on. Just want to make sure we get all of our edges pretty much coat the entire back. Now we want to make sure that we get it fully adhered. We don't really want it to be sticking up anywhere. If you feel more comfortable, um, you can also just place a tissue on top and then press down. And that would kind of also just kind of absorb any extra of the gloss varnish, but I'm not too worried about that at this stage here. So like I said, we just want to make sure it's all nicely flatten down, check for, see there's like some little areas here, like it's going to want to stick up because it's not completely glued down yet. So we just want to make sure we're pressing those down. Same thing on the top here. So if you just need to just keep doing this, it only takes, you know, about a minute or so for it to actually really adhere, at least this gloss varnish, depending on what you're using, if you're using a different type of varnish or if you're using like a Mod Podge um, you could definitely do that again I don't use glues just because I've had issues with glue in the past where if it does seep out it can it, or if you just use glue in general under your resin sometimes it does yellow under the resin so then that just gives you a bit of an issue as well um, it just doesn't look as nice um, as you know over time so, all right, so there we go. Our green one's done, and we'll do the same thing now with the blue. Okay, so these are now glued down, and we have these ones here. And I don't know if you can tell um, when I was showing you earlier, but I'll show you again. Um, this one I just want to mention, I did cut it a little bit short. I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm probably going to be painting the edges of these, so I'm not too worried about this but I mean if you were not painting your edges you'd probably want to make sure this is a little bit more accurate than that the resin's going to cover it to some degree in terms of like especially if you're top coating or doming it it'll kind of you know it won't show as much but in this case like I said I'm probably going to be painting mine so I'm gonna leave it for now um but otherwise I would probably just redo it and just make another one so anyway um so from here like I said, um, I don't know if you can see on these two, but if you look at the washi tape itself, uh, can you see it? If you look at the washi tape itself, there's a bit of a shimmer. It's more a bit more noticeable on this one, I think, where the washi tape has a bit of glitter on it. And that's something I've added in as a detail on these. You don't definitely don't have to if you don't want glitter or you know, anything extra, if you think that you like it, you know, just the way these ones are, you know, like I said, it's not a big deal. They're beautiful just the way they are. Um, but if you want a little bit of extra bling, um, we can add some glitter. I will be doing that on these just so that these match. Um, and also, so I'll show you how I do that. Um, but I also want to show you, I'm not going to be doing it on these coasters, but I want to just give you guys the idea so that, you know, if you decide you want to do more than what I'm doing here, you can. Um, so if you want, like I said, um, you can even add more design or bling to this. So 
I contemplated it, but I decided I'm not going to do it, is um, was thinking that I could maybe fill in one of these, you know, the top or bottom with glitter. And I did actually even pick out glitter here. So I do have, you know, a glitter like this, which I could do on the bottom half if I wanted to, or you could even just do a gold. Like I do have, let me see if I can find it. Like I do have like the champagne gold you could put at the bottom, you know, of the, you know, on the bottom half if you want to do that. I do also have, you know, even just dark sapphire if you wanted to do that on the bottom of this one. Um, I do have, I don't, this one doesn't quite match, but it does, like if you wanted to add, you know, like a more of a, a brighter green to the bottom of that, you could do that. I did also pick out, I'm uh, sorry, these were from Paradise Glitter. So I did also even pick out this new one that they sent over. And this has a very dark um, shimmer to it, similar to what we're actually having for the, the mica on here. So you can imagine if the bottom half of this was painted in this. It'll look really nice too, subtle, but gives another level of texture. So those are options too. So like I said, I'm gonna keep these simple today for this video, but if for any reason you wanted to kind of glam them up even more or just add more glitter to them, that, that that's a way to do it. You could just, you know, literally add to the top or bottom. And it would be a similar way of what I'm gonna show you right now of how I'm gonna add glitter to the washi tape itself. Okay, so what we're gonna do for that is I have, I already have some here, but I just basically put some of this gloss varnish. This one's already started to dry. And I mixed in some of the glitter. So in this case, we have this one here, which is Paradise Glitter's Baby Breath. And you just need to add a little bit, like so to the mix like that and that's all you really need you don't need very much at all it's it's mostly the gloss varnish with a little bit of glitter in it just because we don't really want the glitter to overpower the washi tape so that's really all we're if you can see that that's all we're really creating that's what you see there you can see that and the gloss varnish does dry completely clear so this way you don't it'll just be glitter that's showing so all right, let me just put this away and then I will uh, paint in the details. Okay, so for painting the details on the glitter onto these, so I'll just show you this one, is I'm not painting the flowers, I'm gonna be painting the background just so that, you know, it just kind of adds a bit of a, a little bit of a sparkliness to the background. And just taking my fine tip brush and just kind of just gently going in between there for wherever I see that I want to add a bit of glitter. The flowers don't really need it because they're already white and they kind of stand out already. So I figure this kind of adds a bit of subtle, a bit of subtle glitter to the background. I'm just gonna, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just kind of adds I said it just kind of adds a touch of glitter back there. Like so. And again, you don't see it too much here because it's wet and the gloss varnish is kind of, you know, it's opaque, it's semi opaque right now, so it kind of hides the glitter, but once it dries, the glitter is going to show really nicely. Like so. Okay, you can go back over any areas that you want. There we go. All right, so like I said, you'll see this one's already dried, so you can kind of see the difference. That one still looks very wet, but this one you can see the glitter is showing there. Okay, so that one's done. So let's quickly do the next one. Okay, 
Okay, so there we go. So all four are now done and these two are the ones that are going to be just kind of needing to dry. Then once they're all dry, which is going to take a couple hours, we didn't put the varnish on too thick on these so we don't have to wait super long. But again, um, it is a water base, the one I'm using, the DuraClear. So it needs to be super, super dry. Like you can't have any moisture at all in it because it will affect how the resin looks and is cured. So I want to make sure it's super dry. So actually it's pretty late now, so I'm going to be leaving it overnight and then I'm going to uh, top coat it in the morning. So I'll just be using just uh, regular, my the one-to-one -one resin I normally use, which is Countercultures Artist Thin, to just do the top coat on these. And then I'll de take them out of the mold and I will likely be adding a second top coat to them because that seems to be my general practice nowadays is to always do two top coats on my coasters. So I will be doing that. You'll see that in a time lapse. And then, um, yeah, and then I will likely be painting the edges like I, I mentioned earlier. So I can show you quickly how I do that as well. Anyway, so like I said, we'll go into a time lapse and then we'll see on the other side how things are looking. Okay, so we're all done. And as you saw in the time lapse, I actually ended up taking the coasters out of the mold and then just doing the top coat, like a kind of like a dome coat, um, instead of doing two, just because, because the design was flat with just the paper and the washi tape, there wasn't any like three dimensional paint, which is what I normally do. So which, and when I use three dimensional paint, normally I want to add two coats of resin just because the first coat just kind of barely covers the, um, the acrylic paint or, you know, the dimensional paint. And then I add the second one that kind of becomes more that, you know, glossy dome top coat. So, um, but in this case, because we just had paper, I decided I wasn't going to need to do that. So I just did the, the, um, just the top coat. And you can see that it looks beautiful. And I did cover the, protect the bottom with some liquid latex just because in case it drips and things like that. So if you want to see how that process works, I will put a link in the description to one of my other videos, which shows that entire process. So this way, if you want to know that, um, that will be in the description for you. Um, and then same thing with the gold outlines. You can see that I painted the edges on these blue ones. So, um, if you want to see that process, I have another video that I'll also link in the description that shows that. Um, but just so you know quickly, this is the paint that I use. The brand is Testors. It's like an enamel metallic modeling paint. So that's what I use for my edges. Like I said, if you want to see the whole process and how it works, um, I'll link another video in the description. Okay, so to show you the finished pieces, these ones are still a little bit uh, not fully dry yet. The enamel does take um, a little bit of time. It takes about 24 hours. I mean, it takes a couple hours to actually dry to touch. Like I can touch them right now, but in terms of like being able to hold them, there will be, there will be fingerprints for probably about a day. So I just want to let them kind of be undisturbed for the most part, but I will show you kind of close up what they look like. So that is with the gold edges. And I do think this is really pretty in terms of if you like having that finished edge look, um, it is really nice for that. And you can see how pretty the uh, the washi tape looks in there with a little bit of gold and the glitter. And this is the green one. It looks more blue on camera than really they are, but it is more of like an emerald green color, more than that dark teal that it seems like it shows on the camera. But in any case, you can just see it's really pretty. I really like how these ones turned out. And I actually really, really like the, um, just the, you know, plain edge without the gold on it. I really like how that shines and how it looks. And to me, it looks finished this way as well. So both of them looked, uh, turned out really pretty in my opinion. 
Um, but I did want to show you one more thing before I go. And that is, um, I did straight lines for the paper on these. Now, if you do have a cutting machine or a pair of scissors like these, you can see that it has like that, uh, you know, some kind of a designed edge. You can use those as well. And I started one here so that you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, there you go. So you can see that you can use uh, scissors like this to get that edge there. So, and that looks really pretty too. So you can see on the coaster, if you wanted to use, you know, fancier edges, you know, something that you can use, you know, like a pair of scissors, special scissors or a, uh, like I said, a cutting machine for, you have lots of possibilities without actually having to, you know, use paint. So I did want to show you guys that as well, just as another option. So, in any case, guys, I think that's about it for this one. This is a really quick and simple one. Like I said, I wanted to come up with an idea for you guys. Um, for those of you who feel like, you know, maybe painting just isn't really your thing and you wanted an option for that, you can still make beautiful coasters. And I actually really like the look of these ones because to me, they kind of look vintagey, like especially with the roses, the kind of has a vintage rose look. So um, and I really like that look as well. And it's very simple and classic. And, um, you know, I love all styles of art. So um, I love this. And I do love the colorful, bold stained glass stuff as well. And a lot of the other pieces that I create, I just love trying out new styles. And I do want to make some of these um, a little bit more um, feasible for some of you as well who feel that you know, maybe painting just isn't your thing, um, or at least with the outliners, maybe there's some reason why you feel that, you know, it's just not something that you might be able to kind of master. So this gives you options. Like I said, I think these are beautiful as well. So anyways, guys, I'm going to get going. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section below. Also, let me know, do you prefer the gold edges or the non-gold edges, like just the plain uh, resin edges. So let me know your thoughts. And if there's um, any other uh, ideas you have or things you want me to try or recommendations, uh, let me know in the comments as well. Um, I am going to be changing up some of my content soon because I am going to be moving into other types of media as well. So um, well, those are some surprises in store for you guys. So anyway, um, I'm going to go in. Like I said, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye.